Good morning, good afternoon to all of our viewers. We are excited that you're joining us today. Thank you for spending time with us. My name is Eric Reinertsen, and I have been with Intuit since 2019. And I am a manager uh, for our QuickBooks Live division. And so today we're gonna be talking about preparing for tax season, how to be confident about your books. So I hope you're excited about that. Um, regardless of how much confidence you have, or may not have around this topic, um, there's something valuable for each of you to take away from our time together. So um, now let me introduce you to the amazing Suzanne Norman, um, who's gonna be taking us through this journey. Suzanne has been with Intuit since 2019, uh, and she is a QuickBooks Pro Advisor and a team lead in the QuickBooks Live Division. Um, she's had significant experience helping businesses with their accounting and their bookkeeping, as well as training our bookkeepers um, as they work very closely with businesses like yours. Um, so with that said, Suzanne, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can guide us through preparing for tax season. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Eric. I'm so happy to be here. Um, once again, uh, uh, I am an advanced certified pro advisor and a live bookkeeper with QuickBooks Live. Um, I've helped hundreds of businesses just like yourselves. I love the product. I love how uh, using it as a, a business owner, which I have also done. And I also love helping businesses uh, gain the information that they need in order to file. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So you may be... Um, I'm showing some poll information out here. So there's a poll. If you're looking at the screen, you're going to have to scroll down just a little bit to see it. So you might relate to one or more of these statements here, right? So you might be coming into tax season feeling panicked. And that might be because you're a new business owner and maybe you've, you don't know what you need to do at all. Um, maybe you're a business owner who's had tax uh, difficulties filing taxes in the past. So you're always having a little bit of anxiety. You might relate to that might just be here because you're curious and you like uh, good tips. Uh, I'll have some wonderful information for you, I hope. Um, or maybe you're just here because you're very eager and you love webinars and you just wanted to sign up and, and hear the sound of my voice for 40 minutes. So welcome. I, I hope, I think you'd be a very interesting person to meet. Um, and I, I would hope that you'll get something out of this webinar as well. So um, as you are doing those poll results, Eric, do we have a uh, do we have any information coming in from the poll? We do. We have uh, several folks voting right now live, but overall, the uh, the largest sentiment we're seeing is a mixture of panicked and curious, okay. right? So kind of uh, neck and neck. Every time someone votes, it's either, you know, panicked is the winner or curious is the winner, right? Right. I tell you what. So that just just so that you know, in, in this virtual environment that we're in, the person sitting next to you feels very similarly to the way you feel. And what we're here to do is give you some more confidence. So as you get ready, what are your next steps? Right. So um, here we go. So before I delve into the, the real bulk of the material, I want to mention a couple of things. Right. We do have an ebook that will be available for you. It, there, there will be a link that you can use to download that information. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. I'm not going to go through all of the information that you're going to find in the ebook, right? I'm going to hone in on one component, which is the bookkeeping component. So um, that's going to be the bulk of the information. We're also, we're not going to be talking about any specific, like, tax deductions or ways of manipulating your, you know, information so that you get the most out of your tax return. That's not the topic of today. That's more for, you know, something to talk to your CPA about when you do file. So, but we are going to be talking about how to, what you need to do to keep your books current all throughout the year to better prepare for tax season, the key types of information and documentation that you're going to need to compile, and how collaborating with a bookkeeper can help you to do that. Um, and the difference between collaborating with a bookkeeper or a tax professional, such as a CPA. Um, and at the very end, we're going to have a Q&A session. So you may notice the Q&A um, aspect of the website that you're on. It's at the bottom, I believe, towards where the poll is. So throughout the session, um, you can submit questions to the Q&A. Eric is going to be monitoring that throughout the session. And then we'll have some time at the very end when we can do some dialogue about that. Okay, so go ahead and put those questions out there as you have them. And then we'll be responding to that at the end. Okay. 
So just to kind of frame your mindset when we're thinking about taxes, right? So most of the time when we're thinking about taxes, it's, ah, but really you, you don't know how much you have to be thankful for until you have to pay taxes on it, right? So as you're looking at your revenue statement and you're seeing that great amount of profit that you have, right? So thankful for all the wonderful profit and the revenues that, you're, that your business is bringing in. But what you want to make sure and what can cause you some anxiety is am I paying taxes on the right number? And how do I know for certain that that's the right number, right? So that's what we help you do as, as QuickBooks Live bookkeepers and, and all bookkeepers should be helping you to do that. So how are you going to confidently file? That's what we all want, right? Just like with a lot of things, confidence is going to come from being very well prepared. So I know those of you who can remember your student days, you know, if you walk into an exam, you haven't done your homework, you haven't done your practice quizzes, you sit down completely unprepared, that's going to cause you some anxiety. The same way with taxes, right? That uh, it's going to be so much more uh, easy for you if throughout the year you've been balancing and reconciling your books, um, if you're confident that you understand all of your sources of revenue um, and that you've, you know, independently with your CPA, you might want to talk about any additional IRA contributions and those kinds of things. So do that well in advance if you need to. You also want to make sure to gather up all of your documentation in advance. That way you don't have to get it all up at the end, right? So that's very important. Um, so good bookkeeping will help you do this. Um, that means all throughout the year, the day-to-day -day business activity, where we'll be tracked in categories that are going to naturally flow into your return and that everything will be counted accurately. So that's really going to be the bulk of what I talk about today will be how do you know it's counted accurately? So um, the business reporting will be accurate so long as the data in the account is accurate, right? So there's going to be uh, two primary reports that you're going to share with your tax professional at year end. Um, the revenue statement, often called the profit and loss. That's the label that QuickBooks puts on it if you're in your QuickBooks account. So that profit and loss statement is going to show you how much income the, uh, the business brought in, how many expenses it had and the net difference between those two values or the net income. So different tax forms are gonna need to see your income and expenses broken down in somewhat different ways. So there are certain things that are consistent across all of the tax forms. You know, they all are gonna want to see gross income, but how you break that down might be somewhat unique for your own business. So you do need to know about your different tax forms. We'll talk about that some more. Now, the balance sheet aspect, the, the a balance sheet report that you can run through your QuickBooks is going to show what you own, uh, what you owe, and your equity as an owner in the business. So technically, you know, the equity is the difference between what you own and what you owe. There's also another component of equity called retained earnings, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to that uh, section. But the balance sheet is basically your, your, your worth, your overall worth in the business. But each different entity type, and I'm going to talk about entity type a little bit more. Um, we'll have different reporting requirements when it comes to the balance sheet, right? So you need to know what entity type you are so that you know what details on your balance sheet are going to be impo important for you to uh, put into your return. So how are you going to know that you're doing it right? How do you know that your business information is accurate? And, and we are, you know, just as a kind of matter of point, we are talking about business books here and not necessarily your individual income tax return, right? So um, you're going to know that your information is accurate because every single business transaction ought to be backed by some kind of documentation, meaning uh, and really it's the, those documents that are the foundation of accuracy. So for example, you have a bank or a savings account, a credit checking or savings, all of the transactions flowing through that account are going to show on your statement. So as long as every single transaction showing on that statement is also in your QuickBooks account, then that's tying that information to the statement, right? That's how you um, put those two things together. So the process of reconciliation is going to ensure that all each and every business transaction is tied to those documents, meaning that every transaction in every account 
is counted at least once, but only once, right? Meaning nothing is missing and nothing is duplicated. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. But if all sales are counted only once, that means your gross income is going to stay true. That number at the top of your revenue statement. All of your expenses counted only once, your net income will be true. Now, your net income, as you may be aware, is whatever income you brought in that wasn't used up in the course of your business operations, right? So at the end of the year, what QuickBooks does for you, just as, as how the application works, right? That net income is automatically going to roll into an equity account called retained earnings at the end of the year. So whatever earnings weren't used up for business, they're going to be retained in equity, right? So if your net income will be true, what happens at year end with retained earnings will be true. If all of your assets are accounted for on your balance sheet, that means we're also able to, you know, uh, find any additional depreciation expenses that you're entitled to, and all of your worth is showing there, right? And all of your liabilities being accounted for, that's not only going to show, you know, the debt that you have, which oh, sometimes you just don't want to think about that part, but it's really important for you for tax reasons, because you're going to be entitled to different interest expenses based on, you know, the interest that you've paid for the repayment of those liabilities. And so you want to make sure that you're counting that, right? So it's important to make sure that all of that's on there. Now, there will be some additional things you're going to need to know in order to actually file. So your tax filing, of course, is going to depend on your entity type. I've been mentioning this word. What I mean by that is, you know, are you a C-Corp? Are you an S-Corp? Are you a sole proprietor? And your tax form. So the exact form you file, do you have an 1120, 1120S, or 1040? So different corporate, you know, different types of entities and different tax forms have slightly different reporting requirements, right? So um, that's an important component. We'll talk more about QuickBooks and how that helps you with those tax forms and things like that. Um, also, whether or not your company has employees or contractors. If you have employees or contractors, you're going to be subject to different tax deadlines than if you don't, okay? So you need to be aware of those deadlines. Also, your business size is very important in terms of how you file. And, and by that, I don't mean like if you have a brick and mortar store, the you know, square footage of your store, I mean the business size in terms of your gross receipts. So for example, this is important for your accounting method. If you have over a million dollars gross receipts um, versus under a million, you may be required to account for it using accrual or cash. So accrual accounting, and I'm not gonna go into all the details on that, but accrual accounting is basically just a step more complicated when it comes to the information that you need to track, right? Um, particularly if you have uh, inventory, there are different reporting requirements for inventory for accrual businesses versus cash businesses, okay? So you need to know that as you're tracking your information so that, that you can produce the information you need to give uh, in your tax return, okay? So uh, this uh, federal tax filing information, um, the main components of this, like I've been mentioning, are your business entity type and whether or not you have employees or contractors. So here are some of the dates um, that this is going to be contained in the ebook that you will receive after the um, presentation. There's also an IRS tax calendar that you can check um, each year for official deadlines. And I do highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with the IRS website. There's so much information on there for business owners to just um, teach you all of the rules. Of course, you can also work with, you know, your CPA and bookkeeper, but um, do look at their website because it's very um, informationful. But, you know, there will be quarterly deadlines if you have uh, employees and you're filing payroll taxes. Um, if you don't have employees, you know, you're not subject to those uh, deadlines. So you don't even need to know about that. But, you know, if you have 1099 contractors, likewise, there's going to be an annual requirement for filing for those types of things. So you need to know your business situation to be aware of which deadlines are appropriate for you. So one of the other important parts about getting ready is just getting all your documentation together, right? So um, this is something that's like, ah, uh, if you're like me, remember, uh, <laughs> I'm a little 
getting towards middle age now, right? But I remember very much uh, being younger and going to the revenue department every year to renew my tags. I couldn't ever remember which documents to take in. It caused me a lot of stress. I was certain I was going to get to the front of the line and not have the documents that I needed. So tax prep is a similar kind of thing. We want to gather up all those documents so we don't get to the front of the line and then go, ah, we don't have what I need. Right. So these are some of the things that you're going to be asked for by your bookkeeper or CPA. So we're going to ask for your previous year's tax return. And this is for a couple of different reasons. It's going to show us how your book, book, books were handled in the past. For example, you know, if you have cash or accrual accounting method, we need to be able to see that. Um, it's going to show where your business stands in the present. So for your CPA's purposes, you know, it might flag some losses that are going to carry forward into the next year. So it's just important to have access to that document so that you can uh, use that for your tax preparation. Um, your bank statements, as I've been mentioning, we're going to make sure that every transaction is accounted for in every single business account that you have. That means not only your bank and savings account, but your credit card statements, your loan statements. Um, this is you know, both to reflect the asset correctly as well as the interest expenses that you're entitled to. You also wanna gather up any business transactions that occur in accounts that weren't a business account. So if you had, if you spent out of your personal checking or you know, whatever, um, money for business purpose, then your bookkeeper is going to want to know that so that we can count those expenses for you, right? So have all of that information gathered up. Um, the other kinds of documents that you need and that are recommended for you to keep by the IRS um, are like your receipts. So your, your expense receipts, any paper receipts that you have for uh, basic expenditures. If you are tracking vehicle mileage, you're gonna need to maintain a, a mileage log. Um, your payroll information, so your employee payroll records or pay stubs, um, any other kinds of bookkeeping records, particularly, you know, if you have a brick and mortar store and you have like a cash register slip or other kinds of sales invoices that you might have. Um, if you do invoicing or billing, it, you want to maintain any paper documentation you have about your accounts receivable or payable. Right now, if you're subject to it, you also want to make sure that you're counting your inventory physically at your end to make sure that that number ties to what you have in your QuickBooks account. Right. So depending on your situation, your documentation needs are going to be a little bit unique. Now, QuickBooks Online, just as an application, is designed to help you do all of these things. Right. It's built for businesses. So when you first sign up for QuickBooks and you go and you set up, and you know, you're aware of what the system looks like, it's under the little gear icon in the upper right hand corner of the screen. There's a menu underneath there for company settings, right? And so in those company settings, you're going to go in there and designate, for example, if you're a retail store or, you know, if you have a manufacturing. Or maybe uh, you're also going to be putting in there your entity type and your tax form, you know, so if you're a sole proprietor and you file 1040, um, all of that information is going to go into the account and settings. And QuickBooks is designed to set up the chart of accounts for you to be dynamic based on those entries, right? So it's going to start you out with some accounts. So your basic income accounts and expense accounts. They're going to help you organize your expenses and income, right? So that's going to help you at the beginning. Furthermore, if you have, you know, other kinds of situations, maybe um, you're a partnership and you have very specific equity situation in your business, um, it's going to get all of those accounts set up for you so best enable you to use uh, the system, right? The system also does built-in document gathering. This is so much of a help for you. So within, I think it would spin within the last year, um, the system is enabled for automatic statement download um, for most of your banks and credit cards and even some loans. So what this means is, let's just say I have a Wells Fargo account, right? And I've got my Wells Fargo business checking connected to my QuickBooks um, as the transactions are flowing in. So also can that statement automatically come in from the bank and show up in your QuickBooks. And so your bookkeeper can use that to reconcile your account. And at year end, your, your accountant's already going to have all of that documentation lined up already in your QuickBooks account. So that automation saves you a lot of time. 
You can also basically kind of use the system as your filing cabinet for the other statements that don't have automatic download feature. So, you know, if you have you know, your last year's tax return, other loan documents, maybe you have an intercompany loan that doesn't have a traditional statement, but you still want to document that. So you can use QuickBooks as your filing cabinet to get all of that documentation gathered up and be 100% ready at end of year, right? So that's just a tremendous help. And I've got to make a little bit of a comment on this in that we've worked with we do work with hundreds of business owners right now. And document gathering is something that it's kind of seen as a chore by a lot of people. However, I just want to reassure you that doing it in the moment is going to be so much easier than trying to find it all at year end, right? So throughout the year, as statements become available, make sure that those get attached to your QuickBooks, and then you won't have to do it at the end of the year. Um, the system also enables you to capture an electronic version of all your paper receipts. And you, I'm sure you've seen our ads on TV and stuff about how it helps you to do that. You can use your little mobile app, snap that picture. It's going to bring it into your QuickBooks account, and actually enable you to tie it to the transaction that your bank told us about, right? So you could have that physical copy connected to your electronic copy of that transaction. It's really the best way to make all of that visible. And it's not showing in this slide, but I also want to call out in terms of if you need to track mileage, there's that track mileage feature, which you can turn on in the QuickBooks that will help you to do that function if that's something that you need to do uh, to track. There's also automation for payroll and payroll tax filing. So if you have employees and you don't want to worry about the headache of how do I do their withholding? What do I do for this thing and that thing? Well, the system has automations in place. And depending on the level of subscription that you have and what level of service you um, select that you want, you can have automation for that. So it's going to help you both for the tracking of their withholding as well as how much you're remitting to the government. So that's a tremendous help for a lot of business owners that, that don't want to necessarily have to think about that component. Okay. So there are a lot of tips that I can give you as, as a pro bookkeeper. Let's just say you're going to try to manage your data on your own. Well, what could you do uh, to make sure that your data is going in in a way that's accurate? So there are some things that I would recommend that you delegate. Um, and you kind of have to get a gauge for what you feel comfortable with as a business owner and what things that you don't have time to do, right? So. Keeping your books current really just involves monitoring your account, properly categorizing all your business transactions. If you don't have the time to dedicate to this or the background to easily complete it, it, it might seem very overwhelming. So I would definitely recommend, you know, getting a bookkeeper to help you with that process uh, because they're going to help you to categorize all your expenses and reconcile all those transactions to your statements. Um, they're also going to assist with running the reports that you need to hand to your tax prep person. So it's just really going to be your teammate and, and the helping you get ready for tax time and taking that burden off your shoulders for what do I need to do to make sure these numbers are accurate. But the bookkeeper will be able to help you with a lot of that. Um, in terms of just what they're doing when they're categorizing your expenses, of course, all of these expense categories are going to show they're going to group things together on your profit and loss statement, things like your rent, your supplies, your utilities, or your payroll. And the main thing that's important for tax purposes is that, is that you stay consistent, right? You want everything to be in a category that you know, makes sense and that it goes into the return correctly. So you want to make sure that if you know, you've been using one kind of an expense over time, that you continue to track it in the same way so that it's, you know, it just stays consistent. Uh, the system is designed to help you with this. So, uh, for example, the bank feed. If you've got your bank account connected to your QuickBooks, what it's going to have is what we call the bank feed. And this is where new transactions, so the bank is telling QuickBooks, ah, the customer spent, you know, 
thousand dollars today on this transaction, two thousand dollars on this one, and they received a six thousand dollar deposit. All of those transactions just come into the QuickBooks in the area called the bank feed, and the programming uh, is actually it's got smart artificial intelligence to help it recognize the vendors that it sees in the bank feed across QuickBooks accounts, you guys. So depending on the settings that you've put in there for your entity type and tax form and all of that, it's going to automatically suggest categories that will flow into your, uh, your profit and loss statement. So that can be very helpful for business owners that don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, what you can also do is set up bank rules, and this will help the system to recognize specific vendors as a specific kind of expense or transaction type. You know, maybe you're always transferring money back and forth between your checking account and your savings account. You want to make sure you do that correctly so you can set up automation for all of that to happen without you even touching it necessarily. Um, you can have bank rules to automatically add things, and then you really don't touch it at all. You won't even see it. It'll go right in there, and you'll pull up your profit and loss statement, and there's where you'll find it. Um, the data in the system has a lot of different ways of being tracked to ensure that consistency, right? So it's going to come into your bank account. That payment account is going to tell it one piece of information. The category that you put on that transaction, that's going to tell it another piece of information. The payee you put in that transaction that gives it yet another web, you know, point on that web of consistency, right? So that we can look at that information from a variety of different ways, right? So that's just very helpful uh, for uh, both you as business owners and as you're preparing, you know, tax, you want to make sure you've reviewed how all of those uh, pieces of information have gone in. So um, bookkeepers also have tools that you don't necessarily have if you're viewing your QuickBooks account from the business view. Uh, bookkeepers have tools um, that they, they sign on to your QuickBooks through a portal called QuickBooks Online Accountant. And that has this batch tool where they can move transactions around for you in bulk, right? So you've gone throughout the year, you've done it all yourself, and yay you. But you got to the end and you went, oh, no, I put that in the wrong place. Ah, but no problem. Not a problem at all. Very easy to remedy. The bookkeeper will have it in the right place in two seconds. Okay. So another thing is that you always want to be recording the payee on transactions. And it's, it's almost comical in a way because, like, technically, those of you who know about QuickBooks, you've got your stuff going on in there, you don't have to put a payee on things. It's not a requirement. You can add a transaction with just the accounting category and the amount. That's it. Boom. It's in. However, it's like when people feel like, I don't want to add the payee. That takes too long. It's an extra step. It is to your greatest advantage to do so with the payee. And this is why it's going to both ensure your data is consistent as well as make sure that it's compiled in a way so that you can file it, right? It is absolutely critical to have that payee for payroll or for contractor expenses. Otherwise, how are you going to pull that information back out so that you can file that information for tax purposes, right? So I'm going to talk about these different types of, of payees in a little bit more detail. So your, your vendors on your expenses, um, there are certain reports in the system that are will be will function better if you have that payee in there, right? So there's a report in there called ex expenses by vendor summary. And if you have all of the payees in there, that will work so that you can compare, you know, run and see how much you spent with those vendors this year, maybe compare it to another per period to see how much it changed over time, either by percent or by dollar value. And that's not necessary for tax purposes, but it might be really useful to you as a business owner. So there's all kinds of reasons why that payee is really helpful. Um, also, with regards, you know, I've already mentioned the payroll component. If you have your uh, QuickBooks set up to run payroll for you, then you don't need to worry about inputting the, the employee. But I'll tell you just from personal experience where a lot of business owners fall down is on putting the contractor names on the uh, payments where they're, they need to file 1099 for those contact contractors. So um, 
that is it's a very common mistake and it's also something that you need to be aware of in terms of categorizing the person in the correct category you don't want a contractor to be um you know an employee to be categorized as a contractor so if you don't know the rules for for who counts as what i highly recommend just quick google search and ask for irs rules who uh, should i file 1099 for versus w2 and it will pull up information you'll go right to that irs website and give you the the breakdown on what you need to know about those things now when it comes to your income that comes into your quickbooks having a payee on there the customer on there is vital for your tracking just for your business purposes mostly again it would be useful to use for you to see sp uh, customer spending over time um, maybe you know by amount changed or comparing customers together um, it is also going to help you to verify that the income that was deposited matched the income that you um, the sales that you recorded right we're going to talk a little bit more about how those two things are connected so reconciliation reconciliation is really the key to accuracy it is what i'm calling the biggest bang for the bookkeeping buck and say that 10 times real fast Okay, so that reconciliation, why is that so important? You may be saying to yourself, well, I've got my QuickBooks accounts, you know, I've got all of my bank accounts connected to my QuickBooks. Why would it not be that everything in there is already in there? Why do I need to reconcile? Um, so there's a variety of ways where just in the process of using the system, if you're not doing it the way it was designed, you can accidentally get things in there incorrectly, right? And I'm gonna give you some examples of that. And depending on your situation, this might not apply to you, but, so let's just say you're invoicing through the QuickBooks system, right? You're gonna set up invoices, send, you know, uh, Sally owes me a thousand dollars and she's gonna pay me later, right? So maybe you went into the system and said, oh great, Sally gave me my money today. And so did Jim and so did, Seth, and so did um, someone else whose name I can't think of. <laughs> so Sally and Jim giving me money at the same time is wonderful. I go into my QuickBooks and I say, I got a thousand from Sally and a thousand from Jim. Great. Um, now your bank account is also connected to your QuickBooks. And what the bank is going to give your QuickBooks is a deposit. Uh, the bank doesn't know about your sales receipts. Bank only knows about your deposit. So you may trot right along and say, ah, that money was income, Boop, income in. Now, what you might have done accidentally was double count that income. So what will happen is that when your bookkeeper reconciles for you, they're going to see that, right? They're going to be able to say, oh, wait a second, we have a deposit and we also have this other income. Do these things match together? So if you're in this situation where you're looking at your QuickBooks account, and you're going, wait a minute, my bank balance doesn't match my QuickBooks balance. I have a, maybe they're widely different. Now, a little bit different is understandable because things clear in a different fashion than necessarily we put them in. But if you're seeing a wide discrepancy there, and that should be something you should be a little bit uh, aware of. And in fact, that's honestly what brings a lot of customers to QuickBooks Live. They're, the very first thing that they have is, oh, no. Why does my balance so greatly vary from my actual bank balance? And the reason probably is that it needs to get reconciled. You probably have something either overstated or understated, and the process of reconciliation is going to make sure that every transaction is counted only one time, at least once, not missing, but only one time counted, okay? And there's going to be some additional information that we also reconcile when you um, use a bookkeeper, right? We're going to also tie out your payroll expenses and liabilities. Now, if you're using QuickBooks Online Payroll and that's calculated through the system, less of a possibility for error there, but you might also have outside payroll. Maybe you use ADP, use a third party provider. So you're going to be wanting to make sure that the information you're getting from there is showing accurately in your books, right? So whatever you have for wages, employer payroll tax, and uh, withholding for your employees, uh, we want to make sure to reflect that accurately in your QuickBooks. 
Um, we're also going to be checking in about your undeposited funds, because if you are in the system receiving payment, but not matching that up to your bank deposit, there's always the possibility for overstating income. So this can be a little bit more detailed if you have outside point of sale. Maybe you're not using QuickBooks for your invoicing. Maybe you have a website. And maybe you have uh, like a Shopify website or you use Square or something like that. And you're bringing that data from outside into your QuickBooks. And maybe it pushes it into undeposited funds for you. You're just going to want to make sure that that gets reconciled with your actual bank deposit. And that's where a bookkeeper is invaluable, right? They're going to make sure that they're helping you both understand that process as well as how to link those two things together. Additionally, uh, your bookkeeper will be kind of keeping an eye on your AR and your AP in terms of the balance in there. If they see a bunch of aging invoices, they're going to want to check in and say, hey, it says Sally didn't give you any money yet. That's, you know, that happened last year. Did Sally really not pay you yet? And so that's where your paper receipts for Sally will help you. And also just, you know, want to make sure that that income got counted in when it happened and not, you know, um, we just want to make sure what shows in the QuickBooks actually matches what is happening in real life, basically. So uh, that's something that we're always going to be checking in on and making sure that we're keeping the data consistent. Um, also, for your sales tax payable, you know, I recognize that this is a state level requirement, but it is uh, something that shows on your balance sheet. A liability for what you owe to pay for sales tax shows there. So we want to be um, checking and making sure that that number is accurate and there's no junk data in there anyway. And again, if you're if you're using the system itself, if you're using QuickBooks to calculate your sales tax, should flow pretty easily. Where you can have some kind of more challenging situations is in when you, when you have outside sales that you're bringing in. So uh, we definitely your bookkeeper is going to check in with you about that balance to make sure it's true. There there are a lot of different bookkeeping mistakes that uh, people make very commonly, uh, and these can have unexpected consequences. So I want to kind of highlight a few of these things here. If you have connected your personal bank account to your QuickBooks, it's going to make separating your business from your personal transactions very tedious and time consuming. And, and furthermore, in order to reconcile any account, we have to count all the transactions in there. So you have to label the personal expenses with something, and guess what? It's going to get labeled as kind of an owner draw, right? It'll be owner pay in personal or something like that. It's equity, and you may not understand equity yet, but just trust me, keep your personal bank account not connected to your QuickBooks. That's going to be less headache for you and your CPA <laughs> um, just to keep all of those personal expenses out of there, okay? Now, another common thing is uh, people not reporting their loan balances or their asset values on their balance sheet. Uh, again, uh, that is not only going to not show your business's overall worth, for example, if you need to apply for a loan or anything like that, um, it's also potentially you might be missing out on those interest expense deductions or the depreciation expenses that you're entitled to if you don't have a full picture of what you have on your balance sheet. Um, also, it's common to not categorize expenses properly, and this happens, right? Um, if you, uh, you're, in, you're not in your QuickBooks very much, maybe you've added the category more than one time, um, and you're just not keeping that data consistent, um, that can limit your ability to feel confident in what you're filing. Um, also, disposing of your small receipts, since these aren't required by the IRS, um, uh, but for actual filing, you still do want to keep them uh, because in the event of an eventual audit, audit, uh, you know, they would be uh, needed. So we'll talk a little bit more about what the system, uh, how they it can help you with that. Um, miscategorizing contractors and employees. I've spoken to that topic a little bit already. Just understand that this um, doing that properly is very important. Could be stuck with back payments or penalties. Um, so very good to have a conversation with your CPA about contractors, employees, uh, when really when you start your business. Um, 
Another thing is just not communicating with your bookkeeper. If you don't tell us, we don't know, right? So uh, anything that uh, you need to have counted for business purposes, we need to know about so that we don't miss anything and you don't miss out on anything you're entitled to when it comes to tax filing. Okay, so there are some very specific differences between working with a bookkeeper versus working with a tax professional. I'm going to tell you about a little bit more about that because you might be saying, well, do I need both? Why would I need both? Well, here's, here's what you can think of this as. Your bookkeeper is like the keeper of the bottom line. They're going to make sure every single transaction that you have is counted. It's counted accurately, at least once, but only once. They're going to make sure that that data is consistent and organize your documents for you and run your reports and get you all ready, right? But what your tax professional is going to do is actually line up that business activity from your profit and loss statement with your actual tax form. They might not be a one-to-one -one correspondence, right? There may be things that you're tracking for business purposes that, aren't, that don't have a reporting line item in the tax form. So your tax professional will help you get those correspondences mapped out. Um, they're also going to be aware of any tax filing rules, um, such as, you know, your requirements for contract, you know, filing for 1099s and those kinds of things. Um, if there are any specific deductions that you're entitled to, they, they might know about, you know, tax credits and other things, advantages to you as uh, a tax uh, to get that most of your tax return. Um, so that's what you're going to get from those two different people. You're going to get accurate numbers and then you're going to get an accurate return. Two different types of things though, okay? So there are definitely some things that you want to do to be a good partner for your bookkeeper. If you do choose to hire a bookkeeper, you want to, again, make sure that we've recorded every transaction, no matter how small. Um, and all, obviously, those uh, business expenses happening in that personal account, we want a receipt of those uh, types of things so that we can include them in your QuickBooks account without connecting that personal account to the system, right? So there's ways that they'll help you with that. Um, also, number three, very important, that you understand that you are the one filing the taxes, right? The bookkeeper is not responsible for tax filing for you. Uh, you need to know about those tax filing deadlines. Uh, keep an eye on your calendar for that um, and be ready to do that when it's time. So they're just going to give you the numbers you need and you're going to be the one to trot it down and put it, um, give it to the, the government. Um, also, just in general, we're going to try to get things automated as best as we can. So things like those automatic statement downloads and categorizing your transaction with bank rules, those kinds of things, that will help uh, just keep the workflow moving along throughout the year. And obviously, and maybe it's not obvious, it's obvious to me as a bookkeeper, you want to be providing information and documentation to your bookkeeper as soon as it's available. So throughout the months as you're working, you, they may have questions, they may see a different kind of transaction that they're unaware of what you spent. Uh, so they might want to talk to you about the business purpose of that transaction to make sure they get it in the right location. The sooner you get them those responses, uh, the more quickly that your information will be available to you to file, okay? Okay, so um, what do I need to give my accountant? And is there an easy way? There is an easy way. Through QuickBooks, you can actually get your accountant connected. And this can be, you can have a bookkeeper and an accountant, two different people, both connected to your QuickBooks. The accountant can have their own access to see your financial statements. So they can get in there and run those reports for themselves if they choose. Um, they would also have firsthand access to all of your transactions and any of that documentation that you've uploaded. So it's a good idea to get them connected to your QuickBooks if you haven't. There's, if they're not going to be connected to your QuickBooks, there's two primary reports that you're going to share with them. Your revenue statement or your profit and loss statement that shows how much money you brought in, how many expenses you had, and then your balance sheet. Um, depending on your entity type, you need, might need to show them uh, details on your owner draws. So that balance sheet will be important for you to share with them as well. So QuickBooks Live as a service, 
we do all basically all of the things I've been telling you that bookkeepers in general do. QuickBooks Live bookkeepers do, and we do that with an expertise in the QuickBooks application that is unparalleled. All of our bookkeepers are certified by Intuit that they have a level of understanding of the QuickBooks application. And we also, in QuickBooks Live, send them through additional training to make sure that all the bookkeeping aspect of it is aligned with, you know, what we're doing at QuickBooks Live. So you have a trained expert that's designed to, you know, give you the most out of your QuickBooks and give you that accurate information at year end. So you may be saying, oh gosh, Suzanne, here it is January and I don't feel like I can get, you know, all of the stuff done by the time it's ready. You know, I've been telling me I needed to do this all year long. The year's gone. What can I do? Well, actually, it's not too late. Don't panic. You're fine. What we would do for you now, assuming that you have filed your 2020 tax return, and that's done, gone, right? However you managed to do that, you did it, right? Assuming you're starting from that point, even if you've never reconciled your QuickBooks at all, you can still join and get your 2021 data cleaned up. So you would start with a process that's called cleanup. And they're going to reconcile your 2021 from beginning to end and make sure all of that information is counted accurately, right? And you're going to be collaborating with that bookkeeper virtually. You can have uh, online meetings with them where you can talk to them face to face. You're going to be able to communicate with them through a portal in your QuickBooks account. You'll have it, it'll have its own special page that says live bookkeeping. This will tell you throughout the process where your bookkeeper is at, what task they're doing currently. And when, when they're done with the current month's work, it'll show you that information as well. So after you get your books cleaned up, you can join what's called monthly uh, bookkeeping, which is the team, uh, the type of team that I work on. And we help customers after they come through the cleanup process, just manage those monthly flow of transactions and, and reconciliations as they're happening, right? So rather than going through months and months, we're just going to keep you current and up to date every single month so that when you get to the end of the line, you're ready, right? There's no question. There's no, ah, numbers aren't correct. You can know everything is reconciled and everything is in the right place, okay? So this helps you to really know where you stand. Um, it gives you this that confidence to face tax time and know hey, I'm ready, I can do this, okay? So what, we really would love to help you do that. But peace of mind, um, giving our customers peace of mind gives us a great job satisfaction. It's the reason for, for doing what we do. Um, you know, it's wonderful to help you just be able to focus on your business and giving you that satisfaction is, is uh, wonderful for us. So your bookkeeper is going to help you get all of that documentation together, like we've been talking about and give you that complete confidence at your end. Okay. So now you might be wondering, well, can I sign up now? Well, you can, you can get onto the website. Go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash live and schedule a free consultation. And they're going to be talking to you about, you know, whatever current business situation you have and get you uh, lined out with some bookkeepers that will help you. Okay. So help is on the way. <laughs> uh, one more final little thing here is that don't forget that you have an ebook available to you. This is a resource that shows you basically all of the kinds of things that I talked to you about today, as well as, you know, your tax filing deadline information. And, you know, it's just some general tips and tricks uh, about getting uh, ready. So go ahead and download that from the free resources tab. I believe you'll have to scroll down if you're still viewing me at the top. I believe it'll show underneath um, and you can obtain uh, the ebook there. Okay. All right, so it's time to check in with Eric and see if we have questions to talk about. Great, Suzanne, thank you. So we do have a number of questions and we've got about 10 minutes left. So we'll, we'll get through as many as we can. If we don't get to your particular question, uh, fear not. The ebook has a lot of great information. Um, and so just keep that in mind. But the first question I think would be good to cover is, um, we have what reports on QuickBooks Online will help me prepare for taxes? And I think you touched on this a few slides ago, but 
maybe just summarize for us again uh, as a reminder what reports would be helpful for right. us. So your profit and loss statement, um, that's going to be your primary one. That's going to show revenue and expenses, right? And then your balance sheet. Those two are the primary ones. Make sure if you're filing cash basis that you're running them on cash basis <laughs> and that kind of a thing. But your bookkeeper will help you with that. Absolutely. No, great, great call out, Suzanne. Um, what about, so the next one is, is there a specific set of rules um, for, the, for a new business filing taxes on their first year as compared to subsequent years? Not that I'm aware of. Um, same. That is the same same uh, rules will apply throughout time. Now, where you might uh, want to talk to a tax preparer, a tax pro, uh, if you have a situation where uh, your business grows significantly over time. So if you all of a sudden you have over a million dollars in gross sales uh, and you didn't previously, then you might want to talk to them about your accounting method if you need to update that or not. But otherwise, I can't think of any scenario in which any of the rules would change. If you're filing the same tax form, the, that, that's the rules stay constant. Yes, I think that's the key, right? Um, I know from being a business owner myself, if your entity type changes, you know, then yes, from right. one year to the next, that may affect what you file, how you file. Um, but no, in general, that's, yeah, exactly like you said. Fantastic. Um, let's see. We have a couple other ones. This is a great one about payees. So someone was okay. really paying close attention when you were discussing that topic. Yeah. Uh, and so they asked, as an example, if Walmart is my vendor, uh, and the transaction expense comes out as, you know, like walmart.com, for example, mm -hmm. um, should I write Walmart as the payee? Would that be a good payee to put? Absolutely, it would. Um, and it's really only significant for your business use if you, if you want to, you know, distinguish between whether you bought it in store or online, if there's some reason why you want to track online sales separately from in-store sales, then by all means, you could set up a vendor for walmart.com and a different one for Walmart in-store. But only if you need that for business purposes, not there wouldn't be any tax implication to a different payee there. Great, great. Um, and towards the end of the presentation, we got a couple of questions that came in related to QuickBooks Live. So I want to mm -hmm. make sure we get to these uh, as well. One question is, do we offer accountants specifically with the QuickBooks Live service? Not at this time. I would love to see that happen um, uh, because, you know, we are partners with our accountant professionals across the United States, uh, but not at this time. We don't. Yep. Correct. Great. Okay. Um, thank you for that. And then uh, here's another great one relating to uh, cleanup. As you mentioned, you know, it's not too late. Um, someone asked, can QuickBooks Live help with cleanup back all the way to 2008? No, unfortunately, that's not a service that we provide. To be eligible for QuickBooks Live service, um, you need to, at least to get your 2021 data in there, uh, you need to have filed your 2020 tax return. Mm -hmm. and, and, well, you don't have to have your, your QuickBooks might not be reconciled in those prior years, but what we would do would be basically to kind of adjust your balances so that your current year is accurate without actually altering the data from your prior years. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. So that's a great reminder to have 2020 filed um, in order to, to sign up today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then how do you clear, this is kind of more of a technical question. We'll, we'll wrap up with this one and kind of go into our, um, our ending poll, but how do you clear a duplicate bank feed entry? You talked about uh, duplicates or counting things twice, you know, on accident earlier. What would you What suggest? would you do? Well, if um, you want to get that matched correctly. So um, the, the clearing part, is, you can do that in a variety of different ways, but let's just say, for example, you don't have it reconciled yet. You realize when you go to reconcile, oh, I've added my deposit and my payment. They're two different things. My first recommendation would be don't finish reconciling. Go back to your bank feed, look at the categorized transactions, and undo the one that you undo the deposit transaction and push it back to your bank feed so that you can match it up to the payment that you received, right? As long as those two things are matched, that's resolving that duplicate. Excellent. So the matching feature is critical there. Okay. Absolutely. Very helpful. 
Very helpful. Awesome. So I think that's all that we have time for in order to wrap up on time. I know there were a couple other questions that came through. Um, one, one actually final one I, I would okay. like to address because I think okay. this, this kind of ties it off nicely, right? Um, so, you know, if you're someone who's running your business and you're spending eight to 12 hours a month on your books, would you, would you see this as uh, signing up for QuickBooks Live as a way to kind of mitigate a majority of that time that a business owner might be spending? 100% yes, absolutely. Um, that the, the bulk of what you're doing when you're in your QuickBooks is categorizing your transactions and reconciling things, right? So that all of that work is going to take a tremendous um, load off of you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Awesome. That's exciting. Well, great. I think we're uh, ready for the... Wonderful. For the okay, so we do have... We want to check in with how you're feeling now. So there is a little exit poll. Once again, you're going to need to scroll down underneath uh, our uh, little um, faces to see it. And we'd like to know if you're feeling a little bit more confident now, you know your next steps. Maybe you're still a little bit confused. I didn't get all of your questions answered today. That's OK. Um, we do have that ebook for you as a resource. And hey, sign up for bookkeeping and let your bookkeeper help walk you through the process. Um, because that's what we're here for, right? And if you're still feeling totally lost, I'm sorry. I hope you do find the information that you need. Do grab that ebook, reach out to a bookkeeper. We really want to help you and make sure that you're able to confidently file at your end. Okay. Do we have any results from that poll showing? We do, you? actually. They're coming in nicely. And uh, at the beginning, right, we were kind of teetering between kind of nervous and uh, unsure. Mm -hmm. But now we're uh, we're definitely leaning in the high level of confident. Um, there are some folks definitely, uh, as you mentioned, still somewhat confused. Uh, and I think, you know, if I could just briefly say that I saw a lot of detailed questions, which I loved seeing. We didn't have the time to go into some of those. And I think a lot of what you're looking for will be found in the ebook and or found in working with a bookkeeper uh, live, right? A live bookkeeper. So um, keep that in mind. But that confidence, I mean, we have nobody that's totally lost, right? So that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent results. Thank you guys for participating in that part. Okay, wonderful. Thank you all so much for coming. We're so happy that you were able to join us today. It's been our pleasure to share our work with you and what we do every day that we so enjoy helping our business owners with. So thank you once again for stopping by. Uh, we do hope you download that ebook and check in with us. Uh, see how. Uh, we hope that the end of your year is as wonderful as, as the, um, the beginning of it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Suzanne, for that. And just a quick reminder, um, guys, there is a survey. If you scroll down just slightly from the video, you'll see it kind of on the right-hand side. You can click and take our quick survey. It literally takes, I think, four seconds. I mean, it's very, very short. Uh, so you can click that link right now as we're kind of wrapping up. And thank you, Suzanne, for taking us through this journey. That was really insightful, very helpful. Um, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Absolutely happy to.